Hello and welcome to today's webinar. Today, I want to show you the recently announced Race 3D Pro 3. Pre-ordering starts on November 6th, so it is high time to have a closer look at all the new features it brings. Keep in mind, however, that this right here is an alpha test machine, and as such, there may be some minor changes when we get to the models from the series production. It is important to know that the Pro 3 series that we are talking about today will be available in two sizes. The base model, that is here right next to me, and then its big brother, the Pro 3 Plus. The two machines are practically identical, aside from the Z height they can print at, with the base model right here sporting 30 centimeters, and the Plus version having whopping 60.5 centimeters of build height. If you already own a Pro 2 or an E2 printer, you should be familiar with a number of the things we'll be talking about today. This new Pro 3 series is basically like a fusion of the Pro 2's and E2's best features with a few bonuses on top. But let's start at the beginning. The machine has a solid aluminium frame, giving it a rigid and quality look. However, that means its weight is actually quite high. At over 50 kilograms, this is not something that you can lift solo. Today's highlight will be the redesigned printhead, so we'll save that one for a bit later. The display itself is the same as on the Pro 2 and should look familiar to users of those machines. However, there are a few new features accessible via the display. There's an improved onboard camera. Let me actually switch here. Uh, I hope my camera actually focuses on the display every now and then. So there's an improved onboard camera, all the settings necessary for the new mesh leveling, more on that later, and then there's Eve. Eve is an intelligent assistant reminding you and guiding you uh, through maintenance steps, as well as assisting with troubleshooting should you have any difficult, uh, difficulties when printing. We can go through this real quick, so after I press that little robot head in the top left corner, she'll start asking me, well, what do you need from me today? And then I can, I can tell her, well, my print model failed. And she'll ask me, which of these problems have you encountered? I can say, well, the first layer does not stick to the belt plate. She'll ask me whether I'm using Race 3D filaments. I'll say yes, and then she asks me whether I've calibrated correctly, showing me a picture, and I can just compare what I see to what I actually have on my print bed, and then depending on my answer, she will guide me to the correct calibration menu, where if I click on it, I can then start the calibration process. This menu right here should be familiar to, us uh, familiar to users of the E2, uh, where it is basically the same, a video-assisted uh, calibration procedure going through the entire process from uh, probe offsets, from bed leveling, and everything associated with it. Uh, this makes it very, very easy to calibrate your printer uh, quickly and painlessly. In addition, on the screen in the top right corner, there is now a little moon symbol that is a power saving mode. If I click it, you can see the display turns off and the internal LEDs turn off. Well, that's, I don't know. For example, if you print overnight, you can use this, keep the display and lights off, save a little bit of power just by tapping the display. I turn everything back on. You connect to the printer using a USB stick on the right hand side or using a local network connection either via a cable in the back of the printer or a Wi-Fi connection. Naturally, this printer can be integrated into the Race Cloud for management uh, via the web or app interface. IdeaMaker is still the slicing software that is designed for use with this printer, and if you haven't already, you should check out its newest version. A number of things have been added or improved within that software, as well as there's already a uh, printer profile for the Pro 3 in there as well. Next up, we have the print bed. It is no longer made from a rigid piece of aluminium and is instead now made from flexible steel. We can have a look at this. If I look at the Pro 2's print bed, well, it's a solid piece of metal. That's not very flexible, and if you had a large print on it, it was often quite difficult to get it off the platform if it stuck really well. Now I'll put this one away again. Apologies if that was loud. If I move over to the Pro 3, I can get the flexible steel plate out of there, and you can see that I can just flex this one. And as you can imagine, if there's a large print on top of it, this will get it off the platform without any major effort. The build tack surface should be familiar from the other Race 3D printers. Does need to be replaced eventually, but it can take a, multiple, a multitude of prints and it eliminates the need 
for adhesives, such as Magigoo, hairspray, anything like this. Basically unnecessary, as long as you use the built tack, you will still get very good print results. So I'll put this one back into the printer. And now that we're already on the topic of the build plate, we get, a, uh, we get to a feature that is a massive quality of life improvement and that users of the E2 already know about. It is mesh leveling with flatness detection. Essentially, there's a probe on the bottom of the printhead, and with that, you can let the printer measure the build plate, and then um, you can, what, wait, uh, get a colored diagram um, of the flatness of your built plate. Uh, based on that diagram, leveling of this built plate becomes child's play and is done within a few minutes. It takes a fraction of the time that was necessary on the Pro 2. The rigid assembly of the entire built plate with four guiding screws in the corners, 16 millimeters in diameter, and then two Z-axis um, screws with, um, what was the word? Uh, two ball screws, essentially, uh, mean that, means that leveling has to be done extremely rarely. In addition to all this, the probe measures the base area of the part you want to print before starting to print, and then it can compensate for any still existing offsets during the print itself. So we'll uh, stand here and watch a bit. Let me actually get that zoom in a bit closer once again so we can see what's happening. You can see the little probe below the the printer, that white little thing down there, and it'll touch the built plate, um, and then the printer will know what the offset is and move on to the next rectangle. This right here is the simple mode. There's also a full mode with over 30 single measurement points uh, distributed uh, across the build platform. So you'll have a very accurate measurement uh, using that. So now that we're done with the last section, it'll home the gantry rods, and then we will get our colored diagram. I'll wait until that one comes up before moving on. Okay, so it'll go all the way up. And there we go. And using this diagram now, I could adjust my built plate if it was not level enough. Uh, any offsets would be uh, colored, so Either uh, red or blue areas would be a problem. Everything is green. This is great. I can also show it as a 2D image top down. This makes it very easy to see which areas of the print bed would need to be adjusted if there were any problems. But it says ready to print. My overall offset is uh, minimal. It says the flatness is 0.08 millimeters. That's beautiful. That's perfect for printing almost any part. I'll move my z-axis down a bit and disable the motors again. I'll need that later to show the print head. But this already gets me to the next feature that you can see in the back of the printer. It is this uh, big black object that we can see back there, and that is called the air manager. It's in the rear area of the printer, and it can regulate the temperature within the build volume using fans. It allows you to lower the temperature inside the build volume by about 5 to 8 degrees Celsius. That, in the, uh, on the other hand, means that you can print PLA without removing the uh, top cover, as you used to have to on the Pro 2. So that's something that is new on this machine. Of course, the Pro 3 also comes with a HEPA filter installed, allowing you to fulfill the regular workplace safety regulations. I can turn the printer around to give you another look at the air manager from the back. This right here, I can tell you, is something that will change with the series production machines. So right now, this looks a little sketchy, but that's because this is an alpha test machine. They've already got a, a neater, more beautiful design for this area, but there will be something on the back here to cover this. And then here's the HEPA filter, and this up here is the air manager uh, to keep the temperature inside the build volume nice and cool for PLA printing. Right. Um, Next up, the door and top cover have integrated magnets that allow for a safety stop if either of them are opened. Uh, that allows for a reduction of injury risk in schools or other educational facilities. If we zoom in again, should be visible if I go like this. Yes, you, you can see it at the top here, these two little things, they are, uh, uh, their purpose is this magnet safety system. Now on to the printhead. 
As you could already see a few times before, it looks totally different than it did on the Pro 2. A total redesign has led to over 150 grams in weight savings. The filament runout sensors have been moved to the side of the printer, further simplifying and streamlining the design of the printhead itself. The cable chain has been replaced by a flat ribbon cable. Access to the filament feeding system at the top has become easier, reducing the maintenance effort necessary. But as the highlight, there are now exchangeable hot ends. Let me zoom in again, because this is important. These little cartridges, as you could call them, can be released by just pressing up on that red lever, moving that out of the way, and pulling on it. And suddenly, right here, is my hot end, heat sink, heat break, and nozzle in one. And I can swap this whole thing out in a matter of seconds. You can have multiple of these in stock and available, fitted with different nozzle materials or diameters. Uh, letting you switch between them uh, without any tools or major effort. In addition, the nozzles on these can be swapped out as well. So you don't have to throw this entire cartridge out just because your nozzle is worn out. So I'll just put this one back into the printer. Just like this and push back down the red tab and it's installed back in the printer. You can see how quick and easy this can be. Um, last but not least, there are now, as you can see, uh, LED, whoop, that was the wrong way. There are now LEDs on the printhead as well, indicating whether the nozzle is heating, uh, or whether it is cold, or whether it is printing. I can show you this. If I just set the left nozzle temperature to 180 degrees, uh, it'll start heating up, and you can see how it turned orange. Well, that's, yeah, I think that's basically it. I hope you liked this brief presentation of the new Pro 3 series. If you do have any questions or comments left, please leave them below the video. And if you're interested in more content surrounding 3D printing, 3D scanning, please subscribe to the channel in order to stay up to date. Um, yeah, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I get to see you again next time.